most of the men out fighting during the Civil War, the women wanted the opportunity to show support and gratitude for the soldiers. They also wanted the opportunity to prove women were strong enough and smart enough to work under the most horrific conditions. In the military hospitals, nurses' duties are mainly domestic in nature. They prepare and serve meals accommodating each patient's diet and have to keep track of each patient's meal status. Nurses would also distribute linens, clothing, and other supplies and would look after the soldiers' emotional needs by talking with them, reading to them, and writing for them. Unlike today, they would rarely assist in surgeries. At first, many men were very hesitant and angry at the thought of women serving. They either felt it was unladylike for women to care for naked men, or that the horrible sight so rampant inside hospitals should not be seen by female eyes. However, women nurses still went on to tend to the needs of the sick right on the battlefield, in field hospitals, and in recovery hospitals away from the front. During the war, nurses played a large role and had many duties which they performed. Some of the duties include tending to and cleaning wounds, feeding meals, administering medication, comforting the dying, searching for wounded on the battlefields, assisting doctors during operations, writing letters for the soldiers, talking to soldiers and building up morale, transporting and delivering supplies, and overseeing sanitary conditions at various facilities. Some historians estimate that up to 10,000 women became nurses to help the cause. However, there were two nurses in particular that seemed to stand out and were a huge assistance to the soldiers. They were Dorothy Dix and Clara Barton. At age 59, Dorothy Dix offered her services to the Union Army. Although she was not formally trained as a nurse, her organizational skills impressed the Secretary of the War, who then appointed her as the Superintendent of the Union Army Nurses. Dix was also able to convince the military officials that the women could do the job just as well as men, and she was able to recruit 2,000 women into the Army. Dorothy also took good care of the nurses who worked in the harsh environment. She even went to the extent of obtaining health care supplies from private agencies when the government was not willing to provide them. Dorothy also had many requirements for women to work in the nursing service for the Union Army during the Civil War. To make sure her expectations were known, she wrote a document to lay out these specific requirements. In her document, she wrote, no candidate for service in the Women's Department for Nursing in the military hospitals of the United States will be received below the age of 35 nor above 50. Only women of strong health, not subjects of chronic disease, nor liable to sudden illnesses need apply. The duties of the situation make large and continued demands on strength. Which only persons of experience, good conduct, or superior education and serious disposition will always have preference. Habits of neatness, order, sobriety, and industry are prerequisites. All applicants must present certificates of qualification and good character from at least two persons of trust, testifying to morality, integrity, seriousness, and capacity for care of the sick. Obedience to rules of the service and conformity to special regulations will be required and enforced. Compensation as regulated by Act of Congress, 40 cents a day in substance. Transportation furnished to and from place of service. Amount of luggage limited within a small compass. Dress plain, colors brown, gray, or black, and while connected with the service without ornaments of any sort. No applicants accepted for less than three months service. Those for longer periods always have preference. Clara Barton was also a big contributor to helping out the soldiers. She decided to work mainly to provide supplies for the troops, advertising widely after the battle at Bull Run. She talked to the Surgeon General into letting her personally distribute supplies to wounded sick soldiers, and she herself cared for some who needed nursing services. Throughout the Civil War, Clara Barton worked without any official supervision and just did what she thought was needed for the soldiers. She worked mostly in Virginia and Maryland, and occasionally at battles in other states. Her contribution was primarily an organizer of supply delivery, arriving at battlefields and hospitals with wagons of sanitary supplies. However, she did work as a nurse when present at hospitals or battlefields. 
She also worked to identify the dead and wounded so that families could know what happened to their cherished ones. Though Clara was mainly a supporter of the Union in serving wounded soldiers, she served both sides in providing neutral assistance. She was a woman of great figure who was greatly appreciated for her hard work, and because of this she became known as the Angel of the Battlefield.